What's up, my JTO no damage enthusiasts? This is part two squared plus one. I'm sure you've gotten the hang of the series by now, and if you haven't, well, I'd recommend you to re go through the the part one through four. Yeah. This is the fifth part of my JTO without taking damage journey. Today we'll be taking a look at ring seven and ring eight. I thought that it would be better to do two episodes in the Great Inferno, considering we are pretty close to finishing it. Last time, we left off with 53 tower points, which allows us to access both the areas I'll be talking about in this video, and that's about it, actually. So, what are we waiting for? Let's talk about the Mist Towers, also known as the towers that were way too complicated for the previous episode. Unfortunately, I still haven't beaten everything in Forgotten Ridge. I feel like at some point I will complete every Ring 1 in Forgotten Ridge Tower. There are also a few towers I missed in Part 4, so let's talk about all of them. Steeple of Huge Pain is the first tower, or steeple, that I will talk about. Also, uh, ignore the Halloween lighting, the Halloween event was happening at the time of recording. So yeah, you can skip the long Killbrick walk and another Floor 1 Killbrick section by doing two strategic heli lag high jumps. Then, on Floor 2, once you get to this section, you can either heli clip through this wall, or you can heli lag high jump up to this X pusher. On Floor 3, there's a Killbrick ceiling above you. This doesn't affect you too much, but there are two sections you need to do differently. Over here, you need to do a TOSP and jump to the next platform. For the second section, you must walk off the X pressure without jumping. And the rest of this floor is pretty much the same. The last obstacle is the most interesting in this tower. You guys remember Tower of Killjoys? <laughs> well, we're gonna be skipping floors by dropping down again. In between floor 5 and floor 4, and floor 4 and floor 3, there are killbricks that will damage you if your arms are in the wall. However, the wind pad is located here, just slightly below the floor 5 and 4 kill brick, so you need to turn your character instantly after you pass the kill brick. But then there's another issue, the floor 4 and 3 kill brick. After hitting the wind pad, back off of the frame as far as you can and hope you teleport to the wind room without taking damage. And yes, I did once take damage in the wind room while trying to complete the steeple, and yes, it was painful. Bro, are you f kidding me? Good damage. Okay, well, we're gonna need some analysis. Kowalski, analysis! But hey, that steeple of huge pain. Now the only huge pain in this steeple is the pain of failing the last jump. Likely a tower is technically not a missed tower, but I'll put it here because I don't know where else I could talk about it. This mini tower is not much different from normal, other than one heli clip you need to perform at the start. Well hey, I don't mind new mini towers, it's pretty cool if you ask me. Sticking with ring 5, we have Tower Floral Fury. This tower doesn't have any killbrick sections until floor 5, or floor 6? Well for this video, let's say floor 5. To get past the previously impossible sections, you have to backtrack to this zipline here. You then want to hold down jump and try to do a head hitter jump onto this invisible 2 stud. Then you have to perform a wallless heli lag high jump onto this gap in the flower and flick up. I sure do love taking advantage of old towers having massive design flaws to make them possible damageless. After that madness, there aren't many other hard sections. At floor A, you have to divert your path to the one I am taking, as taking the normal path will force you to take damage. On floor 9, there's this wonky looking killbrick truss, but to not take damage, align yourself 45 degrees to the truss and climb the corner of it with tipas and you'll be fine. Oh yeah, and here's a skip for that one stupid thin killbrick section. I sure as hell won't be doing that garbage. And lastly, floor 10 has a killbrick walk that we can avoid by taking a different path again. Just high jump your way to the top of this rainbow, and after that, just do one more jump over a killbrick and you have basically beaten Tower of Floral Fury damageless. That was annoying, especially because I got kicked once when I completed this tower, and I took damage near the end a few times. Whoops. And the next tower is... Wait, that's it? Wait, no, there, there has to be something wrong. You! Tell me the next tower. Uh, I don't, I don't know, man. I'm just the guy that- Ah, uh, whatever. What do you know? Well, I guess that's really it. Just three towers, huh? That's the first time I've had so few towers in this section. I know there's technically a few towers that I glossed over, so let me put up a big text wall on screen explaining why I didn't do certain towers, or why certain towers are just straight up impossible. So, I guess we move on to Ring 7 now. Welcome to Ring 7, also known as Ring 7 Violence. 
whatever that means. This is where we start to see modern towers pop up, and where quality standards start to get higher, lowering the chances that we can find unintentional skips to skip damage parts. But let's not be pessimistic and take a look at which towers in Ring 7 are possible to complete damageless. Our first stop in Ring 7 is Tower of Rushed Building. This tower is impossible to complete without taking damage off Floor 2. Yeah, not a great start. Up next, we have Tower of Feeling Lazy. Uh, I'm way too lazy to be Floor 9 damageless, and I'm also too lazy to heli like high jump over the spinner of Floor 5, or however many times you need to. This is probably possible, but this just makes me feel too lazy to try it. Maybe later. Okay, no more stupid tower puns. Tower of Collective Collaboration is up next. I guess the next series will be called JTO Without Stupid Tower Puns. Man, that one might actually be kind of hard to complete. You can complete the first two floors of TOCC fairly carefree, just make sure not to fall into this kill brick pit of doom. Then at floor 3 there's a... yeah, there's really no strategy I can give you here. Just try to be patient and as a last resort you can either wrap around the moving wall or jump down and clip into the frame. Floor 4 also has some killbrick jumps, but if you've ever played a fat pap zombie, then I think you should be all good. You can then play through the tower normally until you get to floor 6. Here we will need to perform a complicated skip to avoid an impossible balloon section. Or it might be possible, but it's really difficult. How do you like high jump up to the K, climb up this weird hieroglyph with TFOs, and then wall hop along the frame and turn 90 degrees to climb up the ice platform? Also, make sure to grab the light blue key, you can drop down to it without having to perform this skip again. When moving to turret section of floor 7 outside later, floor 8 has this weirdly precise section. You'll have to have TPOs unequipped for this part too. Okay, now for one of the hardest floors, floor 9. We start off with a ball rolling section. Yo! Is that a mother flippin' super monkey ball reference? I love that game series. After our fun ball roll, we have an outside section with spinners and balloons. Now I decided to just go around the spinners. I didn't expect that to work, but hey, I'm glad it does. And this weirdly buggy section. You'd think that you could just run across this part with helicopter powers, but no, you have to ledge grab and slowly and meticulously climb along the part, including the two stud parts. And for the last obstacle, which is at floor 10, just time your dismount off the zipline correctly and jump over the projectiles. Really simple, at least compared to what we've done so far. And now the rest of the tower is fairly simple to do. Oh yeah, I forgot the blue key. If you figure out a 2, you can just heli-clip the wall. And that's TOCC for ya. It's weird that so many different people made this tower, and yet it feels like a low-quality Ring 3 tower made by two people. And here's a tower that's also possible damageless, interestingly enough. Nidorus calls this tower Tower of Distorted Aerodynamics. This tower is very difficult to complete without taking damage due to its many turrets and other killbrick obstacles. I won't go over every obstacle you have to pass, but I will talk about the more advanced strategies you need to use in this tower. For starters, at floor 4, you need to heli lag high jump up to this platform, go to the very edge, and then perform a speed glitch and lag high jump at the same time. You can do this by unequipping helicopter powers once you jump off. Floor 6 requires you to perform a heli lag high jump skip in order to skip the sphere then drop down and continue it like normal. Then the rest is fairly understandable. At floor 7, you have to time your jumps on the turret so that the turret shoots as soon as you jump off it. Same thing here, you want to jump off a bit before the turret shoots. Okay, and now for the hat trick. After you get off the wobbly platform on floor 8, you must wall hop without TPOs and then attempt to land on this platform with TPOs equipped. Then jump to the right with TPOs equipped, unequip TPOs, and hold down W to climb the ladder. And then you can climb the ladder up to continue the tower as normal. And floor 10. A few more turret sections, and the wind pad is ours. There are safe spots at some points where the projectiles can't hit you. You want to walk to them, stand there, wait for the projectile to pass, and then bolt for the next platform. The second turret's safe spot is pretty much in the middle. And then after those two turrets, you want to move a little bit along this platform, then heli lag high jump over the spinner, and bolt for the safe zone. And now, there's just one more section left, where you have to run for safe spots again, although this section is a lot easier than what we had to do before. And well, if you have followed what I've said, and have better sight reading skills than Logan I sell, then you have completed Toda Damageless. Yay. Moving on from turrets, it's time for Spinny Tower! Do you guys remember when everyone called this the best tower in Jato? I haven't even heard anyone talk about this tower for a year now. Anyway, uh, floor 2 is impossible. Oh well, how unfortunate. Tower of never giving up. Ever. As a man, you must never give up. If you give up, you're a brokey and a little boy. Lazy people who give up never get anywhere in life. You'll never be a top G if you- Oh wait, this is- this is a- it's just Jato video. Right, right, right. 
Looks like we'll have to give up on beating this tower without taking damage of floor 2. Oh, well, I guess I have to make an exception sometimes. Oh hey, it's Spinny Tower, the sequel! Or the original? I don't know. But you can get decently far on this tower, at least up to floor 9, where unfortunately you can't get past this part without taking damage. I'm starting to think that all these towers are impossible damageless. No, these kill bricks are not for decoration, they actually do damage you. And because of that, floor 10 is impossible to complete damageless, and so is the rest of the tower. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is what began my JTO YouTube career. July 30th, 2021. It's been a while. Anyway, floor 1 is impossible damageless. Looks like doing two 4x2 stud stickouts wasn't necessary. Just one tiny section is holding us back from completing the Tower of Yearning's victory damageless. At floor 2, there is a mini net that you have to jump to, and it's strange because the rest of this tower is fully doable. I won't be surprised if this tower appears in Mist Tower someday, but for now, none of our methods have gotten us past this part. Okay, so strangely enough, you can do this pushbox section of floor 3 without taking damage, and you can also get past this balloon section of floor 4 damageless, and same with floor 6 and 7, however impossible these floors may seem. However, of all things, floor 8 ends our run. More specifically, this cylinder. What a lame ending. TOTB just straight up spams kill bricks, there's not even a chance this one is doable. Although you can complete floor 1 damageless. Oh wow, our first catastrophic. What a catastrophe that it's not possible damage. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding, I'm glad it's not. Wow, that's all of Ring 7. Quite a short one, eh? Two out of the 13 towers are possible to complete without taking damage, which... Wow, that's a really low number. Thankfully though, we do have enough tower points to progress to Ring 8, which will be our hardest ring yet. So we have reached the final break area of the Great Inferno, a break area with a catastrophic tower. Sounds about right. Despite this being a break area, the towers here sure pack a punch, especially when completing them damageless. Ring 8 is our last stop before Ring 9 and the Guardians. This is our last area before we start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So let's just get this area over with, since we have a lot to talk about. Starting off with a tower of somewhat simple scaling. Like in the previous ring, the first tower is impossible to complete damageless, but this time it's because of floor 8. These platforms are impossible to pass damageless. Oh well, next tower. National Basketball Association, ha ha ha, I made the cheap choke, we can talk about the tower now. On floor 1, you can do the left button without taking damage normally, but I personally found it easier to heli lag high jump up to the top of the moving platform above the balloon. Oh yeah, and let me just mention, at pretty much every floor there's a kill brick net. This is good when you're playing the tower normally, but when doing this challenge, it turns into a GBJ. That's some foreshadowing for one other tower in Ring 8. Anyway, Floor 3 has a moving spinning kill brick section. I'd say just be careful with spawning the platform and jump on about half a second after the platform spawns. Floor 4 has a section that we can do normally, but it's way too difficult and complicated, so I will heli lag high jump and make it 100 times less difficult. On floor 7, you need to perform a high jump skip and long jump to the platform with a neon black part. This will skip force the damage section, in case you are wondering. And lastly, floor 10. There is one more kill brick section that's sort of like a nerfed version of floor 4's part. Now afterwards, you just need to complete the tower normally in order to complete TONBA damageless. They should have at least put in a basketball somewhere in this tower. Up next is the Tower of Insult to Injury. A lot of people seem to think this tower is impossible to complete without taking damage, so let me prove them wrong real quick by beating you myself. Our first and maybe even biggest threat is at floor 3. To get past the hardest killbrick obstacle, just walk on the edge. Nah, I was just kidding. It only gets worse from here. This is probably like the only reasonable kill brick in this tower. Once you reach the turret section of floor 4, you must wall hop along the glass until you reach the second to last turret, where you then need to turn 90 degrees and hopefully hit the invisible button to save you from falling. Also, uh, don't fall here because, you know, you'll lose the challenge. Our next obstacle is at the start of floor 5. I'd recommend going sideways with T-Pose until you see this platform spawn down here. Then, run back to the yellow sign, and then once the spinner passes, run back to the tunnel. At floor 6, you need to do a heli clip here to avoid a damage brick and to wall hop here in between this wedge and wall. And then comes floor 7. So this one stud turns into a turret once you jump on it, so what do we do to not take damage? Well, we have to perform this slightly awkward ledge grab jump with T-Pose, and then slowly climb around until you reach the corner like this. Then, you can unequip T-Pose, jump off, and land on this moving platform. After floor 7 comes floor 8, which has a killbrick X pusher. Now sadly, this part is impossible to do. 
normally, but we can just jump on this invisible brick and then pretty much continue as normal. Floor 9 thankfully has no kill bricks, although floor 10 does have a kill brick section. And annoyingly enough, it's the hardest section of the tower. Awesome! So you need to get on the moving platform, wait for it to reach the second last position, jump on the left edge, stay in between the second and third stud, and turn roughly 15 degrees to the right. Now, wait for the platform to start moving, equip T-Pose, jump off at the last moment, flick to the right in between the two parts, unequip T-Pose, and finally, wall hop to the safe platform and activate the button that will allow you to never have to do this section again. That was a long explanation, but after all of that madness, you can complete the Tower of Insult to Injury Damageless. This tower was no fun to do, I hated every moment of it, never again. Wee woo wee woo, my new JTO update alarm is sounding. So for some reason, they decided to replace TOIAOS and TOITI with these two horrible towers. Now, this video has already been delayed enough, and I, and according to this poll, you guys too, really could care less about these towers, so I'll cover them in part 6. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, it's Tower of Vibrant Adventures turn. This tower is surprisingly very possible to do damageless, apart from floor 10. You see, at floor 10, there's this part that we cannot pass or skip. Literally every wall on this floor is two studs thick. But I mean, I'm kind of glad since this tower is merciless when it comes to the damage parts. Amos is gonna get real angry when he finds out that Tower of Amos Anger is not possible without taking damage because of Floor 3. You have to press this pink button in order to progress, but to press it, you have to walk on a Kilbrick Cylinder. I'm sorry Amos, I tried my best. Well, this one has a funny acronym. If your sense of humor finds this funny, then... <sighs> I don't even know what to say anymore. Our first kill brick obstacle is on floor 1. You need to touch this moving snake thing, and then wait for it to complete half its cycle. You can then hop on, get the button, reactivate the snake, and then jump on the half cycle again, and that's how you complete floor 1. On floor 2, you need to time a dismount from one zipline, but other than that, there are no troubles. Floor 3 also requires timing and good positioning. Copy what I do to get past the spinning cylinder section, and for the snake, just wait until it gets near the end of the cycle. There's also one last Halilac high jump you need to perform, however, if you're not too good at them, you can wobble the wobbly platform above you so it wobbles low enough for you to jump. Floor 4 to 12 have some insignificant damage brick and turret usage. You just need to time your jumps right, but it's not anything noteworthy. However, floors 13 and 14, aka the button hunt floors, do offer a challenge mostly with the orange button. There's this conveyor section with kill brick walls, but if you remember Tower of Screen Punching from Part 2, then you know it's possible, although this one is a lot easier, since the conveyors push you less. Just hold down the jump button, hold down D, and try not to land next to the wall. There's also the green button, but as long as you don't fall into the kill brick pit, you will be alright. Floor 16 is quite tricky, however. To complete it, you need to do a small skip that allows you to make it past the section before the giant spinner hits you. You need to go up to this wall, do a high jump, and then as quickly as you can, jump to the highest point, or well, this platform. Then you have two options, either high jump on this wrap and then the heli lag high jump up to this wall, or if you're bad at lag high jumps, you can high jump up to this wrap and then jump to this platform quickly. Then our last kill brick obstacle is 18R Knight also known as the Red Mini Challenge at Floor 18. Firstly, I'd recommend doing the following skip to make the section easy. Then, follow the spinner above you. Try to stay in between the two spinners so you don't die. And one last easy spinner section at the top. Just jump over it every once in a while. And then, once you complete that, as long as you don't fail the final stretch, you have completed the Ring 8 Citadel damage list. Hooray! Citadel of Constant Heart Stopping requires a lot of patience to complete damage list, but it's definitely possible, as we just proved. Pretty cool. Yeah, well, let's just say if you thought that was hard, let me show you how to complete Tower of Uneasy Scaling Damage List. Yep, this tower is fully possible, and to complete it without taking damage, you firstly have to perform a wall hop skip at floor 1 at the second button. Anyway, at floor 3, there are a few interesting kill brick sections to look at, although only one has a nice skip to make it easier. It can jump off the platform from here in order to skip the hardest part of this section, and that makes floor 3 a walk in the ring 8 part. And then we have floor 4. Now let me introduce you to a new mechanic, another account! Some turrets have this weird property where other players can block out the bullets coming out of a turret, and we can use this to our advantage. And I swear to god, if one person calls this cheating, it's called taking advantage of multiplayer, not cheating. Just because you don't have friends doesn't mean that I am dumb. Yay, that was simple. Then you want to do this jump only when the spinner's about to connect with the two walls. 
And lastly, align yourself with the second stud from the wall in order to pass this part with ease. Floor 5, only one section, yet it's one of the biggest headaches in this tower. You want to get as close to the edge of the colliding spinner zone as possible, then you want to hold down the jump button, and on your second bounce, jump to where the kill bricks roughly collide again, and then jump to the safe platform. Or ledge grab it, but this option is a lot more boring and dangerous. Oh, and use T-Pose and walk closer to the edge of this ending section. Floor 6 is a break before another arguably hard floor. Floor 7. Floor 7 firstly requires you to jump on this spinner during a good cycle, and jump backwards with T-Pose every time the spinner gets close to you. You have to keep repeating this cycle a few times before getting off the platform while shaking IRL. Now, after some miscellaneous kill break sections, there is a turret section. You just have to use the Lyman keys, it's easy enough. Oh, and here's a side note for this section. The spinner is at arm height, meaning T-Pose doesn't do too much at this section, and can sometimes even sabotage you, so keep that in mind while doing this part. There are also numerous safe spots where the spinners can't reach you. Floor 8, let's just jump straight into it. So here's a trick on this conveyor that makes it a lot less luck based and difficult. Just jump onto these platforms, it's a lot easier. Then let's skip ahead a little bit and talk about the ending of this floor. For the wobbly platforms, you have to jump on the top right corner and then quickly jump off. For the next part, wait for the smaller kill brick part to pass by, then jump onto the spinner. And for the hat trick, we will perform a convoluted double wall hop skip. You want to first wall hop onto the cylinder, then go left, wall hop in between the neon and studded part in the same way that I'm doing it, and try to make it onto the platform on the right. If performed successfully, you will skip the end of 8 and beginning of 9. If you fall, you can usually save yourself at the beginning of 8. Floor 9 only has one short outside section with kill bricks, but it's brutal. You have to jump over and only move a few studs forward, and do this a few times until you can jump off. Then, jump closer to the edge of these wobbly platforms, and try to jump off of them as soon as possible. Then, once you hit the button, just jump off. There's a safety net on this outside, so you'll be alright. And well, the final floor. Floor 10. The worst part is near the start of the floor. To get past these moving kill bricks, you have to wait for them to connect at this wedge, and then do a wraparound. Do this twice. Then, go on top of this wedge, hug the wall, and push the part as far as you can. Once you hit the button, you have to push it back. Once you push it past the platform you're meant to jump on, you just need to hug the wall lightly and it should push the part enough. And well, the final stretch. Turn your character so it wouldn't face the kill brick and then go to the very edge of this part and slowly maneuver your way to the X pusher. After that, there's one last serious part. You want to wait for the moving kill bricks to get close to the end of their cycle, jump to the conveyor, hold down W, and a little bit before you reach the edge, jump to the green button. And that's it, just one more spinner section and you've basically beaten Tower of United States Damageless. Yes! Oh my god, that is so satisfying. That was a really difficult tower, although it's actually not even the hardest in this ring. It still gets much worse. Tower of Triple I. So you see, this tower is technically possible damageless, except my excuse for this one is that if you try using the route that allows you to beat this tower damageless, you get kicked. So I guess this tower is not possible. Let's just say it's not and say that you take damage to the wind pad or something like that. <laughs> Why? There is no way you're going to force me to do this crap. No way. Are you crazy? Not only do you need to never fall throughout your playthrough, which is already like extreme to terrifying difficulty, but you also have to do crap like this. Well, because I want to release this video this decade, I'm just going to skip over this tower. I'm sure it won't contribute much anyway to my Great Inferno journey, and there's no way in hell I'm going to do funny kill break jump rope. So no, it's not possible to do this tower without taking damage, because you're going to take brain damage from the amount of head smashing you'll do while failing this tower. I sure do like myself a tower that has no kill bricks. Those are always the funnest to complete. We don't talk about Toso, it doesn't exist. You have all been fooled by the Matrix to believe that there is such a thing. Oh man, this one was a real goof. I mean, the main challenge is to practically never fall. There are also a few other tricky spots, like at floors 1 and 3, but other than that, just don't fall, smiley face. Also, I use a skip to skip the little netted outsides because I don't get paid enough to go through even more stupid fails, and yet this tower didn't even feel like the worst ring 8 tower to do damageless. Tower of Generation Failure, yeah, so that teaser at the end of part 4 wasn't related to the Damageless series. Unfortunately though, I decided to scrap that video because it didn't have an interesting enough conclusion to be worthy of a video. Anyway, uh, floor 1, you can't do a Damageless. And well, we have checked over Ring 8 with a little bit of my sanity left intact. 
8 out of the 13, or I guess 7 out of the 13 towers, are possible damageless. This means that we have now reached the end game of the Great Inferno, Ring 9, and we will soon end our journey, whether it will be in a good way or a bad way. Wow, we actually did it! We reached Ring 9! So I guess that the answer to the title of this video is yes, you can reach Ring 9 without ever taking a hit of damage. Incredible. I have basically reached World 1's endgame. I will now have to wait for the Guardians to come out before I can make another Great Inferno episode, and I don't think that will be for a while. So the next part in World 1 will take a look at Lost River, Silent Abyss, and whatever other sub-realms there will be, and the final part in World 1 will be taking a look at Ring 9, the Guardians, and the final obelisk. I am thrilled to finally finish off the Great Inferno, but unfortunately, I don't think that Jato devs will finish the Guardians or the Obelisk very soon. So for now, we'll have to take a break from the Inferno and go back to our spatial system journey. Up next in World 2 is Zone 2 in Arcane Area, and I hope to talk about those two areas very soon. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this episode of Jato Without Taking Damage. Sorry for the delays, I was really busy with real life and other videos, but hey, now it's out at least. But anyway, remember everyone, stay at school, don't do drugs, Never underestimate what you're facing, because you might not release your JTO no damage part in time. I'll see you in the next one!